Hi, this is Pop2, and this is Pop2 Teaches. And today we're going to talk about Anime Studio Pro version 8. Just came out. I just downloaded it last night. And I became very frustrated today with trying to understand how the action sequence works. Before I get into the problems with ASP version 8, I'm going to quickly cover the great new features, which is the reason I was excited about getting the upgrade. For those who don't know, I've produced about 100 videos or so, many of which contain a great deal of animation. In total, I use about 10 to 12 different software programs to produce my videos. ASP has always been in that mix. However, in this latest version, ASP may become my favorite. And with this version, you'll have more time to spend on story development. So if you want to crank out cartoons and tell your stories, you'll be able to do so faster and better with this version. And this is possible with two big enhancements, the character wizard and the actions menu. In the character wizard, you have the opportunity to create an unlimited number of characters, and it creates them in eight views. Well, it's actually five. You'll need to use the horizontal flip translate layer in order to get the other three views. Now, for those of you who have created characters from scratch, including various views, you'll see right away the massive amount of time you'll save using the character wizard. Of course, you can make changes to these newly created characters as well as building them from scratch if you so desire. But as I said before, if you've been wishing you had more time to devote to story development but didn't have the extra time because so much of it was spent on character creation, this is the product for you. But that's not the only great time saver that comes with this latest edition. The action menu allows you to create an action once, then use it again in other projects. And if you use a character wizard created character, you can apply any action to any of those character wizard characters. What? What did he say? Huh? I'm confused. No worries, in a few moments I'll show you what I mean. Bottom line is it saves a tremendous amount of time. For those of you who are familiar with earlier versions, you know that moving your character is a tedious frame by frame process. And while there are some tricks that you can master to speed up the work, the tricks themselves require preparation and still require lots of time. But it isn't easy, if at all possible, to transfer the moves of one character to another or to use the moves from one project and transfer them to another. To do so, as I said before, required major prep. Putting in the extra time for large projects would ultimately pay off. But for one time or short projects, the prep time just wasn't justified. With the action menu in conjunction with the character wizard, all that changes for the better. So let's take you through the startup and you'll notice ASP version 8 ships with a new startup character, Dexter. As in earlier versions, the second character is also provided along with the previous version's characters. Now at the right hand corner, next to the version 7's new edition, the library, ASP version 8 has a new tab. This is where the character wizard is located. Okay, I'll show you some of the base characters and a little of what you can do, like... All right, now I want to talk about the problems I have with this version, which has been an ongoing problem with every version that I've owned. The owner's manual. It's basically designed to frustrate its readers. So let me take you through what I went through so hopefully it won't happen to you. Okay, so I downloaded the new version and I'm familiar with its horrible manual, so it's the last thing I want to look at. However, upon clicking the character wizard's OK button and not having my character perform actions as the new version had so promoted, I reluctantly opened it up. Right off, it looks very much like the prior version. And after a few lines, I realize I'm reading everything I already know. So I go to the search engine at the top of the manual and type in its new feature, character wizard. Now maybe, something has been dislodged from my logical way of thinking. But wouldn't it make sense to cover all the details of a new featured element in the section named after that new feature? Hmm. And if you have a second new feature, you might make it easy to find. Oh, I don't know. In a tab, like the first new feature. Why not bundle the information about the second feature with the new feature. Hey, I have a never before thought of idea. Why not have a chapter called Everything You Need to Know About the New Features? Instead of scattering information in bits and pieces throughout a manual, that sucks. All right, enough of my ranting. This is what you need to know. In order to read up on the information that you need and to get your characters to move, you should type in the word action. Then read the manual, the different pages indicated, and you will get the information that you need to make this thing work. But again, it goes against logic. The new feature is called Character Wizard. When you go to the Character Wizard section, it's incomplete. So if you want to get 
complete information in terms of being able to read through the process, go to actions and read those particular articles. Or better yet, just follow these simple steps. Okay, step one, click OK. After you finish designing your character, click the OK button, drag your character into place, and we'll begin with a walk command. So you want to start at the beginning or in frame one, and then hit another one about uh, frame 72 at the end of the cycle. Then you go up to the window menu and click actions. So open up a new window with all the available actions. Now again, remember that these are all the actions available to all of the character wizard characters that you've created. So if it's available for one, it'll be available for all of them. And before you start clicking away, let me go over a few things so you don't drive yourself crazy. All right, new scenario here. Bubba's taking a walk in the woods, and we're gonna use some action to show this off. The first thing you should notice is over here in the layer section that there's a switch with the different views of Bubba. So that's a back view, side view, front three quarter, it's a front view. Okay, I have it highlighted. Look at the switch here. The check is next to front, and the front is highlighted. So let's, you wanna highlight the front bone, and the reason for that is you double click in the actions menu, you'll actually see that's associated to that bone and it's associated to all the bones. If I click on the forest layer, you won't see it, and you won't see it on the switch of Bubba either. If you're wondering where the movements are on the timeline, you have to actually highlight the bone because the movements are on the bones. Now, the second thing you wanna make sure is that you have your timeline beginning at one or greater, put it on zero, and you go and try to add an action, it won't work. And how do you add actions? Not by double clicking. Double clicking brings up an edit feature. And you can tell it's in edit mode because the timeline's been highlighted. Before we go into edit mode, let me just show you how to input an action. So you have to double click on the main line. And the way you know what's happening and what's active is by this little red arrow here. So the main line is activated. And now I can just single click over the action I'm looking for. If I want to start with a jump, I single click there. And I have a ch two choices of inputting. One, right click and input. And then select insert reference where I can go up to the icon here that's associated with that, which is this plus sign, I can insert it there. Now it's in the timeline. So he jumps. And now let's begin his walk. Go up here and we add walk. And now he's walking. Okay, and he can continue to walk. Let's take it to frame 96. Okay, and we will add a keyframe on each of the bone lines so that everything stops. Boom, 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 boom. So all this motion, all this movement used to take a bit of time to create longer but he stops there so I don't want that stop to be like that so we're gonna take his leg and body and arm and we're gonna fix it all right here so he's look, looks like he stopped moving at that point all right it looks like it moves a little bit boom there we go boom now he stopped Couple minor moves minor adjustments and it looks a little better the only other thing I need to work on is perspective here he starts here he jumps and now he starts his walk he's walking towards the camera so we're going to Make it big, starting on frame 20, is that 26, using the translate button and losing, using the scale layer button. So we're going to long, and then when we get to 96, we're going to scale them bigger and move them down just a wee bit. Okay, so there we go. There you go, you have your actions. 